klicken Sie im GoToWebinar Bedienpanel auf die Schaltfläche Übertragung starten, damit alle Teilnehmer Sie hören können. Das Programm wird Sie benachrichtigen, sobald die Sprachübertragung beginnt. Die Sprachübertragung beginnt jetzt. Alle Teilnehmer befinden sich im Zuhörermodus. Welcome to our next webinar here at JFT Brokers. Um, my name is Stefan Fredrichowski, as always. Um, sorry for the short delay, but uh, there has been another webinar ongoing, and um, I have had to wait really until uh, 7 p.m. Um, because I stopped uh, automatically the other webinar, and um, <clears throat> therefore I have been um, straight at uh, 7. It's nice to have you here back at uh, JFT Brokers and welcome in the name of JFT Brokers as well. Of course, um, I hope you will enjoy the topic of today. But before I really start, uh, just um, that you know, as always, uh, the webinar is recorded, you know, and um, you will find the recordings from tomorrow onwards on the JFT YouTube channel. And uh, if you are interested in later shown uh, Excel sheets, and we will have one, uh, a few of them um, during this webinar as well. Um, you can send me an email and I will make sure that you get those Excel sheets uh, if you want. And uh, what you only need is my email address here. So it's uh, s.friedrichowski at jftbrokers.com as you can see here on my, my first slide. Um, I hope I, I will manage that during I speak here, I will um, upload already uh, the, um, the PDF document uh, so that you have the, um, the slides of today um, directly and that you can download them here in the GoToWebinar uh, control panel. Um, just a second and uh, they will be there. So we have a interesting topic or maybe a totally different topic than all the other topics um, during the last year uh, more or less because today it's about real stock trading simplified so what is here uh, there are two things really new the one is that we today we deal with uh, stocks um, up to now, we have been deep into um, forex trading, indices, gold, oil, uh, so commodities uh, as well, but never we have touched the topic of stocks. So, and the other new thing is that we will talk about stock trading, not as CFDs, as contract for differences. We will talk about real stock trading so real buying shares of a company real assets and that is something different as well so both is new stocks in general and real stocks as well so but that is a topic and that will be at least for me it's an enrichment for the overall trading activities because we know how to deal stocks we are, later you will know as well or maybe you know already um, but we can use some ideas of um, other trading uh, strategies and we can um, transform them to real stock trading and we use a very big fundamental bias if it uh, comes to stock trading and we will talk about that as well okay but nevertheless you know i have always to show uh, up with uh, that slide here um, our risk disclaimer finally we talk about trading strategies but when it comes to your own trading, of course, you trade for your own, on your own responsibility with your own account and your own money. But uh, I think that's self-explaining and I have mentioned that already now. So let's, let's structure a little bit the today's webinar. So I want to touch a little bit more about why real stock trading is really an enrichment and why it's uh, it has so many positive aspects um, and directly we come to the question hey how can i select the right stock value the right company to buy the stocks i will summarize a few of well-known criteria um, it's only a short list so we could even go further into that topic as well but later you will see we can use 
very easy approach. And then we don't have to, to look into the details of those companies, uh, what is their business model and uh, in which market uh, they, they are and so on and so forth. It's much more simple. But before really going into that kind of strategy, I have one slide. Um, the one or the other may say, okay, that's a little bit simple stuff, but um, um, we will use the same logics, the same calculations within the later shown Excel sheet uh, to calculate volume, stop loss, and uh, something like that. Therefore, I want and I have to mention uh, those kind of calculations here as well. But then it comes to the real strategy, and the strategy is a pullback trading strategy. And the name is already telling you uh, how we trade, so we wait for a pullback. And that's more or less all. That's all what we do, because we can use the fundamental long bias of, um, of stock values in order to have the right direction because we trade real stocks, so we will only go long because that's the only possibilities if you buy uh, real assets, real stocks. And I will show it within uh, two Excel sheets because we, we start with one strategy and then um, we will extend that strategy a little bit further because uh, there are some aspect uh, we want to get rid of and uh, therefore we have another variant uh, so that we only trade when it's really absolutely interesting. And I will do everything today uh, for one example for uh, Apple, but all the Excel sheets are already well prepared so you can take any stock history uh, of uh, any company, put it into the Excel sheet, and then you can try around what kind of parameters you need for that specific stock value. Finally, and that's just for, let's say, information purposes that you know, hey, um, it's not only working for Apple. Um, I have already investigated uh, a complete portfolio of um, stock uh, companies. And uh, what I did here, um, I looked for all the 30 um, companies within the Dow Jones and uh, built a portfolio strategy for all of them. And I will share with you the equity of uh, that kind of strategy because that um, equity is already what I always call dynamic calculated. Um, the one or the other may know what I mean with that uh, kind of methodology. So it's a walk forward methodology um, how, in order to, to um, have not a strict backtesting aspect, but uh, later. So why is stock trading a real enrichment? So the first thing we have to keep in mind is that if we buy real stocks, and I mean real stocks, not CFDs on stocks, if you um, buy real stocks, you buy something with an intrinsic value. It's really it's similar as if you buy um, a piece of gold. Um, because you have a share of that company. Um, you are owner to very minor percentage, but you are owner of that company. So there, there are real assets behind buildings, knowledge, people, um, patents, uh, whatever, um, products, product lines, um, and so on. So it's a real asset which you buy. So it has an intrinsic value. It's different than we open a long trade on Euro, US dollar. Um, then we don't buy something with an intrinsic value. And that's a complete different story here when it comes to real stock trading. The other aspect is that you get dividends. Okay, only if that company is paying dividends, but um, a lot of companies are paying dividends. And so we can take that income that we turn already as a small starting point. So why not? Um, so it has already a positive aspect that we get dividends. The other good aspect is compared to uh, most of our other trading activities is that we don't have financing costs. You know, if you open a long trade on Euro US dollar, we have to pay every night the so-called swap costs. Um, Okay, there are a few pairs where you, you profit, uh, um, where you have positive swap costs, but in general, for example, if you buy <clears throat> a CFD on a stock, uh, then you have those financing costs. Or if you buy, a, um, if you open a long trade on indices, 
uh, then you have those financing costs as well. So every night um, you have to pay a little bit. It's a small amount, but it's a, um, something you have to, to compensate as well. Okay, the disadvantage is that we don't have any leverage on the tr trade. So whatever we invest, that money is, let's say, gone. So at least it's within that stock value, but it's not anymore on my account. So that, that money is blocked and one-to-one -one because we don't have um, any leverage. So, and finally, I put it in brackets here, but um, <laughs> um, the one or the other might say, okay, that's an advantage as well. You can get a coffee and the annual meetings. So if you like, you, you can visit those meetings and you can participate, um, but, Okay, it's, I think, not the main reason to buy stocks, to have that uh, free coffee. But now the strongest argument why to buy real stocks. Buying stocks is a long trading activity. So like going long on DAX or S&P 500. And we know that stocks on a long term go north. Okay, you may say, but not every uh, company is going north um, over time, um, but there are a lot of companies really have, having that strong bias to the north. And there are two fundamental aspects. Those companies can only survive by growth. And even our complete economic system is based on growth. So that kind of bias we can use because a long trade is a good trade on stock values. And the other good story here is that um, now, I think since one or two months, you can even buy real stock values directly at JFD brokers out of your MT5 terminal. So that's a really good story. So you can use um, the normal environment like MT4 and then directly buy real stock values, not CFDs, that's possible uh, even for a much longer time, but uh, now you can even buy real stock values. And the costs, the transaction costs um, is uh, $2 per round turn, which is really um, a fair price for um, such a round turn. So it's quite interesting. But now, yeah, okay, we have to select what company, what do we want to buy? And then I call it now the normal story behind is something like in my list. I go through that list, but it's really just a summary of maybe um, something you, you have in mind as well. So you, if it comes to, to stock trading, you may say, okay, I like that specific company. I know them very well and maybe you even work for that company i know the business uh, behind i know what we can expect that's a company i invest money in so i buy stocks of that company and honestly a uh, long time ago um i have um, worked closely with a company uh, which is called asml that's a dutch company uh, in the semiconductor environment um, building um, production equipment um, in order to manufacture um, chips, computer chips. And yeah, I, I uh, knew that company very well and I invest money in that company buying stocks and it was really a good story uh, for me uh, and for the company. So you, you may trade what you really know. Or the other idea might be to say, okay, I only buy strong values. You may have some logic to to distinguish between strong and weak values, um, and maybe it's just to, to um, you, you you compare to an EMA and say, okay, all the one which are above the EMA, I go in, or you even select um, on a monthly base which one has the strongest. Um, grows the strongest um, return and then you go for that company so that would be buying the strong values um, or another selection criteria might be okay i only buy companies um, stock com stock values um, for those companies which really pay dividends because i want to have to have that part in my pockets as well so another idea or you do real hard work, 
diving into their business models, into you, you have a, a list of interesting companies and you really go into the, uh, their business models. You have your, your own opinion about uh, what they are doing. You have your own opinion about their potentials. You have maybe other sources telling you something about uh, the potentials. Um, like a story, okay, right now artificial intelligence is um, is a buzzword. Um, you go in companies which um, doing exactly something like that. So that might be a selection criteria as well. Or finally, you do fundamental analysis. Oh, it's fundamental analysis uh, written on my slide, but uh, it's fundamental analysis, meaning um, you you look into the balance sheet, you look into the profit and loss statements, and then you, you get your own opinion of what that company might go for and uh, how uh, it will go in future. All that you can do, and uh, I would not tell, hey, don't do that, but we can do it much more simple. So it will be really simplified. We don't have to do that kind of stuff. We can do it more or less as a systematic trading approach. But before uh, doing um, the pullback strategy, just um, a few words on how to calculate uh, trades when you um, <clears throat> when you buy a real stock values. So, okay. I know, and uh, um, you you may know already how to calculate everything, but at least then let's go quickly uh, how to do it um, and uh, repeat that kind of stuff here as well. So an example, I want to buy for $1,000 Apple shares. Okay, the actual price, and by the way, that was a price yesterday morning, um, is uh, 192.3. And so the question is, how many stocks can I buy? Okay, that's quite straightforward. Uh, it's 1,000 divided by 192, and I get 5.2. And since you can not buy any parts of shares, uh, uh, it has to be uh, an integer number. So uh, I round that number down to five. So I could buy five shares, one story. But now <coughs> we are trader, and as a trader, we know we can place stop losses as well. So if I want to buy Apple stocks and I have in mind, okay, um, my stop, I want to place my stop loss as 160 <coughs> and I'm willing to risk in total 500 euro. So that means when the price would go down from 192 to $160, then I want to risk $500, so that is the overall risk uh, I'm willing to accept. Then I can buy a little bit more uh, shares. I, the calculation is straightforward, 500 divided by 192 minus 160, and I can buy uh, 15 shares. Well, so that's nice. I can even buy more, and I'm still willing to risk $500, but the downside is still my investment sum. So the money I I, um, I block with that uh, Apple stocks is close to <clears throat> $3,000 because I buy, have to buy 15 uh, shares. So the invested money is close to 3000 My risk is $500 if I place my stop loss <clears throat> at 160 So that's the kind of calculation you do here, a straightforward. <clears throat> Sorry, just <clears throat> I mute you. So I'm back again here. One remark on that kind of calculation. Because the stop loss is only active during trading hours. And um, let's keep it simple between half past three German time and 10, uh, 10 p.m., that stop loss is active. That means Overnight, I don't have a real stop loss. So assuming the close price, the one day might be 162, so close above my stop loss, and the open of the next day is 155, then I will lose per share five extra dollar. So I have that risk of overnight gap. That's the name for that. Um, 
it's not quite probable that um, the share will wake up in the morning with 30. So I, I can think one can handle that risk, <clears throat> but I want to mention that additional risk, uh, which is indeed there. So um, we have that overnight uh, gap risk, which go down below our stop loss, and nothing can pr protect me for that. But that's a kind of calculation. But now, how can we do that pullback strategy? Um, and the, the approach is really quite simple. Let me guide you through the chart and um, I will explain it specifically for one point in history here within the chart. Um, so I go back to the 27th of, um, of March and um, that is marked with uh, the dotted blue line, the vertical one. <clears throat> and the open of that candle is marked with a um, blue line here and the open on that day has been 173.92. So that was the open at that specific day. Based on that open at that day, we place the buy limit order. A few, uh, in my case here, 2% below the open. If you do the math behind, um, you end up with about 100. Um, 70.55 to be exact, and that's a green line. So at the open of the market, at half past three German time, we do that placement of that order. You may ask, hey, why 2%? Hmm, let's see. We do a back testing with that kind of strategy later within that Excel sheet, and um, then we can, can even try out what buy limit order limit also the, the percentage value is uh, most suitable and it will be close to that number by the way <clears throat> but we can do that kind of back test so my example trade here later we will do the same logic for the complete history of um, complete means in this case i started with uh, the year 2000 so with 18 years history so what back to that day at that day, we place the buy limit order. And of course, we can see the red uh, candle here. Uh, during the day, that order is filled, meaning um, the price passed our buy limit. So the, the, the buy order is automatically um, filled and we have now shares. In my case, five shares. Um, why five? Okay, five, because I want to risk $50. So going back to our previous calculation, that means if my, my entry is at 170 and um, I want to risk $40, um, $50, I can buy five shares if I place my stop loss at 160. So that's a complete logic. So now we have our five shares. We have a stop loss at 160. And um, now it goes further. We wait. In the first kind of strategy, <clears throat> we will um, immediately uh, go already to the next step. but we could wait until the end of the trade. In this case, I place a take profit level, a target, and my target here is $100. That translates, if I buy five shares, <clears throat> then that translates to a target of 190. So there's a um, take profit. I get a question here of uh, once again to, to the kind of calculation. So um, the starting value here is when I want to place my order, I have to answer the question how much money I would like to invest into Apple. And in my case, I set that number fixed to $1,000. So whenever I open a trade, I want to invest $1,000. And those $1,000 directly translate to five shares. It's the same calculation on the previous slide. 
Now the next step is I want to risk 50 euro uh, dollar. And the logic is now the stop loss here is calculated. It's not taken out of the chart. It's not like um, making chart analysis. No, it's purely calculated. Since I have five shares and I want to risk 50 euro, then per share I can lose 10 dollar. And that means my stop loss has to be 10 dollar below my entry. That's logic for calculation. Same with the target. I want, if the trade will be a winner trade, I want, want to uh, profit with $100. That means I have to um, gain $20 per share. And that means my take profit is at $190. So that's all. In my case, of course, whenever you, you build a strategy or you want to illustrate that kind of strategy, you do it with a trade which is running well. So later uh, here, the trade uh, comes to take profit. So, and we would not do in this first step, nothing else after the first trade. So whenever we, we place the order and if the order is placed, we wait until that, um, until that trade comes to stop loss or take profit but we can do it better and the idea is okay let's do it iteratively so going to the next day so at the next day we are already invested and at that day we would be in the minus because price went even further south we place once again such a buy limit order once again 2% below the open of that day, so the open of that candle, which would be about here, so where the mouse um, cursor is right now. Okay, that order would have not been filled. Anyhow, we do it the next day, the next day. And all those days, um, you can do it visually here, going for the distance between those two lines. <clears throat> It's not absolutely correct to move that distance uh, to the south because then uh, we would not do it sentence wise but anyhow it, it would more or less look like that you would see no of uh, none of those orders would have been triggered later the first one would be here exactly here we would open the next trade because here the open is at that level it's um, um, by purpose is a green line here. And now we would place the next buy limit order about here, and that would have been fit. But now we would recalculate stop loss and take profit, still under the assumption that we want to risk finally $50. It will later turn out that that number is a little bit too small. And that we want to finally profit $100. So since we do a second buy, our stop loss will come closer to us. But the good thing is the take profit will come closer to us as well, to our current price. So that's the idea. We do rebuys, but normally people are telling, doing rebuys in a loss is a nightmare. Yes but only if you don't have any limits. If we have a fixed number of dollar or euro, we are willing to lose by that trade and we would, will not increase that number, then that kind of logic makes sense, but only then. So we don't want to um, risk more. It will be in that case here, still $50 for then both trades, the overall trade sequence. And that makes it quite interesting. <clears throat> so um, let me repeat how that process is done. And then we jump into the Excel sheet and see how the backtesting uh, works for uh, that kind of strategy. So the first thing has been, the first alternative has been, we, whenever the first trade starts, we do nothing until that trade reaches stop loss or take profit. Or, second idea, we do it every day. 
there will be a lot of days which where the buy limit order would not be filled. But anyhow, we do it every day. But since we use a fixed amount of risk money, we have to adjust our stop loss for the overall summed up position. Same for the trade profit. So finally, if that trade sequence will go for stop loss, we will lose that fixed amount of money. Same for the take profit. So we, we think in trade sequences and not in single trades. <clears throat> in the Excel sheet, we do it a little bit different, but that is only because otherwise we, 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 we get a problem um, with um, stop loss and take profit because we are using um, daily um, candles, so daily prices for open, high, low, close. We have a problem that we don't know exactly when, what event is first. So we don't know whether the high is before the low or the low is before the high. So finally, I cannot look into the day that I could only do by, by going for smaller time frames of my price history. But uh, then the uh, Excel sheet will be a little bit more uh, complicated or uh, simply will be longer. So we do the following. And for stock trading, that is um, something which is OK. During the day, the buy limit order does not have stop loss, neither take profit. If that order is filled, OK, it runs. If you have already ongoing trades from previous days, they have a stop loss and a take profit, exactly how we did the calculation before. Maybe that part of our trade sequence is running in stop loss or take profit. Okay, that we can calculate. For the new filled buy limit order, we do the stop loss and and take profit calculation on the next day. That's uh, how we do it within the Excel sheet. And let's look how that works. And then we come to an improvement of that kind of strategy. And here is our start um, behavior within the Excel sheet. So let me guide you a little bit through that Excel sheet. Uh, you can have it. Um, I send it whenever you like it. <clears throat> Um, but that you know a little bit about how the logic is uh, working here. So, of course, we have um, the historical price data, in this case for Apple. And um, then, it's straightforward, we have such a buy level. And you find that 2%, um, and you can change that number, I mark it already in, in, in uh, yellow, that we might change that number for buy levels. And we use the same buy level for the complete history of 18 years. Then we get um, those days marked which uh, achieve, and which reach that buy level. And then it comes to the calculation of the size, so the volume, the number of shares we, we, we are buying. Those are based on that invest money. And that is 1,000. This number you might change, um, but just for optimization purposes, just leave it as it is. So um, let's go for, um, oops, that was wrong. I want to have this here and this one um, not filled. OK, so that is only for calculating the number of shares we, we buy. The real numbers, which are very important, is my stop loss, my risk value for a trade sequence, and my take profit level I want to have in dollar, in this case in dollar, because uh, uh, Apple is um, priced in, in, in dollar, and those I would change. If you dive a little bit deeper here into the Excel sheet, uh, what really counts um, is the ratio between the size value, stop loss value, and take profit value. Uh, therefore, you don't have to change all the three of them. And the rest is done here by the Excel sheet itself. So whenever we buy here, for example, in, in the first, in, in, in the second row here, um, we reach our buy level. 
And of course, as I mentioned, <clears throat> during that day of buying, we don't have a stop loss, we don't have a take profit. With the open of the next day, we place a stop loss and a take profit, and then it goes further. If we do additional buys, um, you will see here, let me move it a little bit down, that on that day here, we get a second buy. And um, therefore, we have an increased size of that trade. And everything is done here iteratively um, until we reach stop loss or take profit. And now let's look a little bit to um, to the three graphs here so that you know what is uh, we presented there. Um, and at the lower end, quite easy, that's the price of Apple during the last 18 years, um, just for, for illustration. And then the maybe most interesting part is the equity. <clears throat> that is the ec calculated equity based on that strategy, including commissions, so transaction costs. And yeah, that's the one we uh, would get if we trade Apple with that pullback strategy with the buy level of 2% and invest some per trade of $1,000 with a stop loss of $200 and the take profit level at $1,000. That would be our equity. And just for information, I have plotted two additional things here in that uh, final, uh, thread graph. And that's the amount of invested money during those 18 years. And finally, in red, <clears throat> the floating loss or profit <clears throat> of our trade sequence. And now the good thing is, we might change those numbers and see, okay, this is one equity um, profit in total close to 15,000 euros and you can see um, some specific slope. And what I did here, um, I calculated one key figure in order to, to help me in order to see whether the, when I change the parameters, whether the strategy improves or not. And the key parameter here is simply the slope of the equity divided by the average amount of money invested. Because both matters. Um, okay, we want to have a, a huge slope, high values of, uh, for the slope, and uh, we don't um, want to invest that much of money. So therefore, we have um, that ratio of slope divided by <clears throat> average invested money. And now we can change parameters. Like, for example, we can go up with a stop loss uh, value from $200 to $300. <clears throat> and um, we can always see how the equity changes. OK, gets a little bit better. Oh, no, let's not go for 40. Um, let's go for 400. Um, but 40 is not that bad as well. So. Surprisingly, what happens now? If we have such a small stop loss. We get a lot of trades, and the overall equity is doing quite well. But let's see what happens if we go higher uh, the road to 400, for example, for the stop loss value. And uh, we will see okay, um, slope divided by average uh, invested money is lower, but I like the kind of equity here, and maybe we should go for other numbers like 500, and then we will change um, other values here as well. And let me, okay, wow, this doesn't look that bad, 500 and 2% buy limit, so we are close to what we want. Um, and the equity is improving um, by changing those numbers. And now I increased uh, the buy level a little bit more. That means we don't have that many trades. And if I now go up even to $900 for stop loss um, value, then it improves once again, um, but only slightly. But anyhow, so now that equity doesn't look that bad. And you can see how easy you can um, find out those parameters. You can do it for other stock values as well. And you may ask yourself, wouldn't it be better to have one parameter set for all the stock companies? Let me re-question that. Why? Why should every company 
and the historical price and the future price changes behave the same. There are companies which are much more stable. And there are companies which have strong up and downs. For example, General Electric is more slow. Apple is one of those companies with huge highs and lows. So if th those price changes are that dramatically different, so why to trade every company, every stock value with the same set of parameters? There's no story behind that. <clears throat> Therefore, we use individual parameters for each stock value. And just that you know, if you go for uh, Microsoft Excel, um, then you can do that kind of uh, optimization even automatically. So you click on those numbers, uh, which are uh, which you you like to change, and then you use in within Excel the so-called solver, <clears throat> and that is finding a maximum by varying some certain cells. And then you can um, leave that job, that kind of optimization to the computer and it will do the job for you. So it's quite easy um, to optimize uh, such a strategy here more or less um, automatically, which is really a fine thing. But now let's look a little bit to the Apple price chart here. What we are doing here is long only. That means we, we expect, we want to have, uh, we want to be part of going north <clears throat> because it's a long strategy. And I don't have a chart by hand here. Um, think about uh, the, the chart of um, Deutsche Bank um, in Germany. That chart is going south, I think, since nearly one decade now, uh, since financial crisis. So, okay. If a company, the price of a company is going down and down and down and down, maybe we should not trade that company. But that we can do quite easily. Let's use an EMA simply as a filter. Let me illustrate that within a chart. So we have here, um, um, once again, the Apple chart. Um, it's more or less the same picture than before. And I put one EMA within the chart. Right now it's an EMA uh, with a period of 40. <coughs> and I would add just a simple logic to our entries. Trade only, we place only by limit orders if the price of the open is above that EMA. So that helps us to say only um, if the overall price is going north, so if we have a more long-term behavior going north, yeah, okay, then we do that kind of buy limit orders, that kind of pullback strategies. And in those cases, like here, when it's going, when, when it's below the EMA, we don't trade at all. So we, we stop trading um, and look for other the, the universe is bigger than one uh, stock company, so we can go for others as well. So we have a logic which would say, okay, Deutsche Bank, um, we would not trade uh, with that kind of strategy. It might work, but why not going only for those which are stronger? And then use the pullback strategy in order to get the better entry price. <coughs> So that's straightforward to have that kind of EMA as a as a filter, um, and let's use that here as well. But I have to make one additional comment for that. So okay, we use that EMA as trend filter, and we only place trades if the open is above the EMA. But there is an exception. Think about we have an ongoing trade already. So we are invested in Apple. And then the price crosses the EMA to the south. <clears throat> so the next day we are still invested in case the stop loss is not reached. In that case, I would open once again a buy limit order. 
because we get if the sequence goes a little bit further <clears throat> we get in average a better entry and we have still the possibility to recover that trade but we would only do that, that, that process of rebuy even in case we are below the EMA until that trade sequence comes to an end if that trade sequence comes to an end then we stop trading for that stock value so the overall advantages in weak market phases we do not trade and the same which is mentioned here on that slide is now uh, next in the excel sheet and um, now we have an additional column here uh, ema and we have um, one additional parameter uh, which is um, the <clears throat> the ema period which we might change and now we have to um, we have four parameters we can turn and then we can see how that behaves and of course um, i can change uh, here those parameters always we get new equity lines and you see already okay that improves um, it's uh, getting better and better and i want to share with you one really weird solution just that you see what's possible here as well uh, let me go for buy level of two and I go to, for a quite strange stop loss value. Let me go for a little bit bigger money, 20,000. <clears> and um, going down with a take profit to 600. Wow, what's a, a nice equity. Um, so it's really looking quite well. And what, what it's behind. In this case, there has been one moment, and that was during the financial crisis, um, we have had a trade finally ending up with an invested money of 50,000. <coughs> and we need that stop loss level here of 20,000 in order to survive the trade, specifically at um, financial crisis. But on the other hand, hmm, the equity looks really well. So you see, we can with that additional filter, but with not uh, that weird uh, parameters, we can get um, fine values as well. Let me change the EMI period a little bit uh, to other values and don't have um, a stop loss value of um, um, 20,000. Let's go back to 900 and go back um, for the take profit of 1000 then we still have quite well um, uh, equity so it works well and that we can do for all stock companies all your pre-selected list of um, interesting companies and you find a good set of parameters how to trade uh, that company and th that concept is really working i have investigated with that um, and I hope you, you, you know a little bit when I say with that walk forward methodology. Uh, let me explain briefly what that means. So what you do is um, you go for, you go in the history of your price chart and then you say, okay, let me investigate 2005 until 2010. And then you find the good parameters or the best parameters for EMA um, stop loss value, buy limit and take profit and you optimize for those five years. Good, job done. But now you apply those parameters in the future. So you have done the optimization between 2005 and 2010 and you apply those parameters in 2011. So in the future, from the perspective of the optimization. The 2011 has not been part of the optimization process and you look for the results within 2011. Okay, you record them, you write them down and you put them in, in an Excel sheet or wherever and then you do the optimization once again but now from 2006 to 2011. You do that optimization and you apply the best parameters, your best found parameters in 2012. So you always do optimization and apply in future. That means your parameters have not been part of the optimization. 
And that's exactly what we would do from tomorrow onwards when we go live with that kind of strategy. We have an optimization window and then we go for trades from tomorrow onwards. So that's exactly what we would do in future as well. But still, I can record all those trades of always in future. And um, I want to share with that result with you here as well. And that looks like this. So that is a portfolio of all 30 Dow Jones companies. Honestly, it, as um, I selected those 30 companies which are today in the Dow Jones. I know uh, from time to time <clears throat> there are changes and I have not looked into that kind of changes. Uh, I did the calculation for all the companies which are today within the Dow Jones and we have a really nice equity. Um, so we gained nearly $2,000 uh, 2000, uh, here with a really smart drawdown. Drawdown within that strategy um, is only in the range of um, uh, $10,000. So earning $200,000 with a drawdown of, uh, of $10,000, <clears> <throat> that is quite a well strategy. And that is already the result of that walk forward. So all the trades recorded and shown within that equity are those future trades added up once again. And um, if we have such a result still, it's, let's say, a proof for the logic of that strategy and that you can do that kind of optimization and then trade it from tomorrow onwards. So it's really looking nice and um, I hope I can find a way that we have that within our overall portfolio as well. But uh, let's see, um, because it would be another step of diversification and uh, still this is without uh, dividends and uh, stuff like that. Uh, that is not taken into account that would come on top of uh, what we have here. That's about pullback strategy um, for real stock trading. Let me summarize. Let me summarize. So real stock trading is quite attractive and we have still to, to keep in mind that we are buying real assets and um, with an intrinsic value. And we know that even going for a quite simple strategy like this one here, the pullback strategy shows really well results. And the other good thing is that we can buy it directly out of MT4 within, uh, for JFD. Um, no, not MT4, sorry, that was a mistake. It's MT5, uh, but behaves for that kind of trading more or less the same. So it's not a big deal to, to come from MT4 to MT5. And you can do everything still in your uh, well-known uh, platform. So, and with very good cost level of um, $2 um, per round turn. So that's a pullback strategy. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope, um, yeah, I will see you later in two weeks. Uh, we will have the next webinar. Time to trade, I think is the name. Uh, that is um, more an intraday strategy, not something like this one here, where you have really, um, you have only one action that is at the open of the market. So at half past three, you would have to do something because the uh, automatically, um, um, canceling you can do automatically that the order cancels uh, if not filled um, by ex expire functionality within MT5 or MT4. And so here you ha only have one action per day, um, but <clears throat> in two weeks we will have more action, so to see, so to say, and uh, I hope you will enjoy as well. If you want to have those Excel sheets, no problem. Just send me an email to s.friedrichowski.jftbrokers.com and I will make sure that you will uh, get those um, Excel sheets in LibreOffice and in Microsoft Excel. Okay, that's for today. Um, yeah, all of you, um, well, have a good evening and see you hopefully in two weeks again. Bye-bye.